Sometimes the story we tell ourselves is not really true. Sometimes the story others tell about us is not really true. Here on today's Heart Lift with Janelle, we are going to learn how to rewrite our story. So pick up your favorite pen and journal, grab a cup of something delicious, and start your heart lifting journey towards living a meaningful life. Hello and welcome back. It is so good to be back with you today for season six. Drum roll, please. Can you believe we are in season six? And the theme for this season is a summer of reset. Now I know Like my daughter who lives in Uruguay, South America, it's winter there. But wherever you are, I want to invite you into a season of reset. I chose the word reset strategically. You know I would. And I'm talking about it in terms of computer language. And a reset is to turn a computer, an operating system, off and then on again, when it doesn't work correctly, to make it start working again. And we know that we can reset most routers by holding down the reset button for 30 to 60, sometimes 120 seconds. So I want you to lean in here as we're opening up this season. We've already had our first guest. I was so, so excited to bring to you authors Jem and Alan Fadling, Living an Unhurried Life. And I wanted that to be our season opening, our grand season inaugural episode. Because I believe that as we are coming out of this global pandemic and reopening the world, that many of us are a little bit disoriented and many of us, not all of us, so I don't know where you fall, are in need of a reset. How do I now then live, right? How do I live now? What's the question? How do I do life now? Because I know personally, I don't want to go back to normal. I actually want to live at the new normal that I have spent time becoming acquainted with during the pandemic, lockdown, quarantine, shutdown, whatever you want to call it. I did press a reset button in my life and I held it down. What are we going on now? Almost 500 days or more. So I held it down quite a long time because there were many things in my life that were not pleasing to me. When I would ask myself the question, do I like the story that I'm living in? Do I like the way that my life is playing out now, right now, in this point of my life history? And on many levels, I had to answer no and confront these issues tenderly with lots of self-compassion. And in my marriage, I had to press the reset button. And in my relationships with my children, I had to press the reset button because there were there were just things that weren't working correctly. And I needed to have them start working properly in a more healthy way. As we say here in the Stronger Everyday community, we are committed to the threefold cord of all things healthy healthy sense of self, healthy behavior patterns, and healthy communication skills. So one particular area during the pandemic lockdown for myself was in the area of comparison. And I'm always tried to be authentic and vulnerable with you. And I've talked about this before, but maybe it will help you see yourself, like ask yourself, what do I need to reset over the next nine weeks? Nine tools for nine weeks. That's our summer reset. We're going to go through Stronger Every Day, my brand new book, which offers nine tools for an emotionally healthy you. I'm going to take nine weeks, give or take a day or two or an hour or two, and work through 
those nine tools slowly with tremendous intention. And I'm going to offer you highly practical, applicable ways in which to practice each one of those nine tools. So I can't wait. If you do not already have my book, Stronger Every Day, you can download it right now on Kindle. You can order it on Amazon or anywhere books are for sale. And I want you to have that in your hands as we're going through this summer reset, the season of reset, where we are going to turn our operating system off. We're going to hold the reset button down. And then we're going to turn it back on and have our operating system, which is our heart, our mind, our soul, and our body, working more correctly. How does that sound? Let me know. I want to hear from you. Please let me know your thoughts. So as we move forward in our season of reset, I thought it would be fun to look back over season four. Drum roll, please. (laughs) It was quite the season, maybe even a symbol clash, (laughs) because season four took us on a transitional journey from the podcast that was Speak Healing Words to our podcast platform today, which I probably will stand on for the rest of my life, today's Heartlift with Janelle. And it transitioned as well from just a solo podcast with just me teaching and talking and sharing my stories and my thoughts and my hopeful wisdom into a conversational interview-based podcast, and I think you've liked it. I've heard really great responses. I've heard very helpful tips. I have taken them to heart. I am practicing this new skill that I have had to acquire in how to host a podcast interview. Very different, in a sense, than therapeutic interviewing although it it is helpful to have that training. So I'm not perfect yet. I'm a work in progress, and nor will I ever be perfect. But what I have hoped, and what my hope was, I should say, was that I could bring to you great thinkers, remarkable, heart-lifting people who share their stories and share their wisdom and share their insights because, you know, we need everyone's point of view. We need everyone's perspective, not just one. I don't think it's a healthy practice to only have one one teacher in your ear other than Jesus Christ, because he certainly is one trustworthy teacher, and I do want to hear his voice above all voices. But I think it's really good, because I know even in my own marriage, my husband is an Enneagram 1, I think you know that, and I'm an Enneagram 2, and we think very differently, and I need his perspective. I need him to read what I'm writing and what I'm teaching because he always goes, you know, I think you need to do this or come from this angle to reach this certain kind of person. And he's always just been there in that capacity in my life to uh, make my brain a little more whole, right? He's very left-brained. I'm very right-brained. And so we balance each other out very, very well. And so I thought it would be fun. There's that beautiful... life lesson quote that says, life is lived forward, but understood backwards. And so we're going to look back today with great fondness and just take a journey through season four and all of the many messages and lessons that I think came out in our conversations with all these great thinkers and lovely human beings. And I really, really, I can't stress this enough, I really want to hear from you, because this podcast is for you. (laughs) It really is. I sit in this chair, and I prepare lessons and teachings and scripts and show notes with you in my prefrontal cortex. You are right in the front of my mind. And so I want to hear from you. What do you want to hear more of? What have you loved? What have you not loved so much? I've heard very constructive criticism, like, Janelle, you just get way too excited. You need to calm down because we can't 
you know, we, we, I'd rather hear from the, the guest than hear how excited you are. And I've listened to that and I'm trying to really emotionally regulate when I get excited and when I hear great wisdom come from people. So please take a moment and send me an email at Janelle, J-A-N-E-L-L, at Janelle, J-A-N-E-L-L, R-A-R-D-O-N dot com. So that's Janelle at Janelle dot com. Please tell me what you want to hear more of. Who would you love? Who would be a dream guest to have on the podcast? Let's dream big. Let's ask big. Let's pray big. The guest, honestly, that we've had on, I can't believe they said yes. I have been, my faith has increased <laughs> and that increases my capacity to want to risk and ask more. So I am very excited about what perhaps this next season holds. Let's see who God brings to us and who can come and bring to us messages of hope and healing and share their life story with us. So let me know. Send me that email and I will read them. Send me your questions. I want to answer your questions. I know you have them. So send me your questions via email or hop on over to either my my public page on Facebook, which is at Janelle Rarden Author, capital J-A-N-E-L-L, capital R-A-R-D-O-N, capital A-U-T-H-O-R. Or even better, join our online community on Facebook, Stronger Every Day, a heartlifting community. It's private. We meet there as often as we can to just decompress and connect. So you can leave your comments there. It's a couple places. You can also leave them on a direct message on Instagram, and I'm just at Janelle Reardon. Leave them there. Lots of choices. A lot of today's introduction to the season is just an exhale. It's just an exhale, a time to catch our breath, and a time to prepare our hearts for a reset, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So season four began with our transition, as I said earlier, from Speak Healing Words to Today's Heart Lift with Janelle. We took the time to receive what the world was bringing to us, which was this global pandemic that shocked us all, that took our breath away, that caused us to close down our communities and come into our homes Oh my goodness, you dear parents who were called to homeschool, work from home, do all the things, all the things. So that is where our season four transitional journey began, and it was quite something. And so in order to really take that pause that we all needed to take because we were, you know, as our British friends say, gobsmacked, like just what the heck just happened, I started with creating a a beautiful, small, short, very short course. It takes about an hour to get through it called Everyday Epiphanies. If you haven't already taken that or gone uh, to that course, go ahead and try it out. It's really great. Everyday Epiphanies. It's on teachable.com and you can find it on the link on my website. And we started with these words by John Milton, gratitude bestows reverence allowing us to encounter everyday epiphanies, those transcendent moments of awe that change forever how we experience life and the world. And as this journey started for us, not only were we facing the global pandemic that pushed us all to the edge, a presidential election was firing up at that time. It really was firing our national temperature And we had the increasing parental pressures, like I just mentioned. We also had a lot of prejudicial racial uh, divisions happening and just lots of chaos. And so to focus on gratitude 
to focus on looking outside of our windows, taking long walks in nature, shifting from high-pressured lives to a slow, still pace, cost many of us to become highly disoriented. And one of the ways that we ground ourselves in times of heightened anxiety and pressure is to practice gratitude. So I thought to myself, I've got to start there. Because when I have done that in the past during times of great stress, it has always brought me a sense of peace. So we went and we looked at everyday epiphanies. I challenge you to go outside the house every day and find something that takes your breath away. I invited you to have eyes that see beauty. Blaise Pascal once wrote, in difficult times, you should always carry something beautiful in your mind. Oh my goodness. I've read so many biographies of remarkable heart-lifting men and women who endured unimaginable hardships, and each one of them spoke of something beautiful that they kept in their mind. So we learned the importance of fixing our gaze on beauty, the beauty that surrounds us, being mindful to notice, really practicing mindful eating, Gathering once again around the table. I heard someone say yesterday, someone very affluent, actually, who has a very high position in this world, who said prior to the pandemic, he was not home 150 nights of the year because of his job. And then during the pandemic, he had to be. And he said it was life-changing. He'll never be the same. He will never go back to the way things were. And he said the most gratifying Part of what the pandemic brought to him were family dinners that he said he had missed a million times. And so that's being having a a grateful attitude, and that's also having eyes to see and notice what's right in front of you. And so I hope we hold on to that as we move into this new normal, which I refer to as (laughs) numal. I hope we hold on to our grateful perspective. You know, perspective is an interesting concept. Psychologists do not believe there is one way to study the way people think or behave, and I couldn't agree more with that. If you just look at the state of our our world, we know that there are more ways to look at things than just our perspective. So on so many accounts, we have to learn to agree to disagree, don't we? We need to know that the foundation of spiritual unity, the foundation of communal unity is to agree to disagree, to be civil, have civil obedience, to be civil in our our treatment of others, and to be respectful. (sighs) Thanksgiving meditation that I put out is part of my new book, Stronger Every Day, and I focused on Ask for Something Greater. So if you missed that, please go back. Please go back and listen to that beautiful meditative prayer, audio meditation that I have called Ask for Something Greater. It came from my dear mama when she was in a very long, long stint in the hospital, and she was really on death's bed. And she just kept saying, I just need a small miracle. I just need a small miracle. And I mean, she said it a thousand times. I'm not being <laughs> using a hyperbole here. And I, it really got to me. And I thought, why is she only asking for a small miracle? And when I crossed the threshold of the hospital foyer one day and the sliding glass doors opened, I heard an aha, I heard a voice that said, Janelle, ask for something greater. I'm a God of the greater. Yeah, it changed my life. We talked about graciousness being a quality of mind, and poet John O'Donohue refers to graciousness as a quality of our minds. And so... We talk a lot about that in this community, but we wanted to take some time and be very strategic in setting intentions on how to develop a strong growth mindset. And so we looked at graciousness and we looked at beauty. And then we interviewed our very first podcast guest, and that was award-winning author Julia Cook. And we talked about her book, A Flicker of Hope. Let me tell you, if you do not have Julia's book, A Flicker of Hope. You need to get it. I don't care how old you are. 
I pull it out every time I need a flicker of hope. And I'm, can you hear that in my voice? I'm so smiling because she brought me such joy. Oh my gosh, she's written a gazillion children's books that deal with mental health and uh, bullying. And oh my gosh, so many very relevant, relevant issues with children and adolescents. And they're so applicable to us as adults. And so she just talked to us about resilience and mental health and suicide prevention. And she just believes that hope is a children's window for a better tomorrow. And so that was just delightful. She was absolutely delightful. I hope you go back when you need a flicker of hope. We then brought in my beautiful, beautiful friend, Latan Murphy, author of uh, Courageous Women of the Bible. Oh, Latan, what a fierce woman of God. And she wrote this beautiful book, Courageous Women of the Bible, and we focused on the one woman, Deborah, because as uh, Latan writes, she says, as Deborah exercised her faith in God, I think she became more than a number, more than just a woman. Come on. (laughs) More than just a woman. And then we had Latan back because once was not enough. And that's when she talked about when courage stands up. She writes, victory demands that we get up. Oh, somebody needs to hear this message today. It's right on time for you. Mm. Victory demands that we get up. Lying around won't get us to our better tomorrows. It takes wild courage to fight against oppression and depression. I'm going to read that again. I really sense this is for you. you. You know who you are. Victory demands that we get up. Lying around won't get us to our better tomorrows. It takes wild courage to fight against oppression and depression. Mm. I just want you to put your hand over your heart right now. Put your feet on the ground. Ground yourself if you can. If you're driving, keep your eyes open. But if you're not, I want you to close your eyes. Receive wild courage right now. Wild courage to get up. To stand in the center of whatever is swirling and whirling and twirling around you. If it's chaos, if it's confusion, if it's a cacophony of negative voices, shh, be still and know God is with you. He's not asleep. He's right there. Can you feel his presence? Feel the angelic forces that are surrounding you right now. You're surrounded by angels who are fighting for you. You just stand. Stand in the center, heart lifter. Stand in the center of your sphere and receive wild courage. Courage to get up. Courage to fight against oppression. Courage to fight against depression. Hear me, heart lifter. Hear me, heart lifter. God is near. He's very near. He's so close to you right now. Take a deep breath and breathe in his presence. Receive wild courage. We then picked up our pens in this season. (laughs) At the very beginning of Stronger Every Day, We picked up our pen, and there's a beautiful audio meditation that I I may repeat here. 
I may add it in just for you again, so you don't have to go anywhere else to get it. And we listen to a beautiful Lexio Divina on the woman at the well, the star, the protagonist, the beautiful center figure in Stronger Every Day from John 4. I led you in that beautiful Lexio Divina. Yes. We transported back to that ancient but true tale, and we noticed, and we listened, and we identified with her, and we asked ourselves, what point of view is in my head today? (laughs) And then I offered you several more audio meditative exercises that are all a part of the book, and they're all in season four for you to return to. And then we entered season five which began in the winter, was our winter season. So we moved from season four, our fall season, into season five, our winter season. And that's when my book came out. It was very exciting. And I just appreciated all of you being so supportive. And so in season five, episode one, we talk about, are we peacekeepers or peacemakers? We return to this very deep subject because I felt like, whoo, I wanted to offer almost a primer to the nine tools in my book. And so I spent some time reflecting on, hmm, what might what might be some additional tools that you will need when you begin reading the book? So I thought, oh man, this is always something that comes up in therapy sessions and in my own life and not a lot of teaching on the difference between being a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. So We really, really went into that, and I thought, what better way to open a brand new year, a brand new season of Stronger Every Day, than by tackling this difference between being a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. So when we're peacemakers, conflict's involved. (laughs) It's involved. And uh, if we don't like conflict, then we're going to probably lean over to the peacekeeping side. And that never really does anyone any good. So we went deep into that, and then we moved into adaptability, because I thought, wow, when you're on, when you're beginning a journey journey of transformation, you have to become adaptable. And so I shared my own confrontation with anxiety and how creating a capacity for adaptability helped me through a really tough medical crisis. And so we looked at adaptable actually means the capacity or ability to manage your state of mind. Let me repeat that. Adaptability is a capacity or an ability to manage your state of mind. We had to go there. We had to lay that foundation. And then we talked about the beautiful introduction to Stronger Every Day, and we'll revisit that probably here over our summer reset, our season of reset where the light enters. Because Rumi once said, the wound is the place where the light enters you. And I think this is one of our highest, highest downloaded episodes. It really resonated with all of you that there could and can be beauty in our brokenness. And in my introduction, I talk all about the beautiful Japanese art form of kintsugi, And we know that this global pandemic has led us all to some very hard places. Some of us have some brokenness, I have no doubt. So we ask that piercing question, how can we move forward from this pandemic with more strength and character and light than before? In this primer to studying what we will need as we start a journey of transformation, We learn to ground ourselves in grace. We've talked a little about that already, but grounding ourselves in grace and shaking off our shame, learning a new language as we shift from shaming to gracing. We brought in experts. We did. We brought in the experts in season five. We brought in Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith, and she shared with us the wisdom of being well-rested. If you didn't go to her website and take her beautiful, astounding, helpful quiz on where you need rest. She offers seven types of rest and has a quiz on her website that enables you to see where your deficiency is in being rested. 
I'll put that link into our show notes for you so that you can revisit that. And maybe you're in a different season. So taking that quiz in different seasons in life would be very helpful too. Season five brought us into a beautiful conversation on how to be stronger in our faith with Dr. Christy Galtier, the co-author of The Journey of the Soul, A Practical Guide to Emotional and Spiritual Growth. And Christy led us in a really beautiful, beautiful meditation at the end of how she floated in the Pacific Ocean and spoke over herself, 1 Corinthians 13. And then she led us in a beautiful meditation with Psalm 23. If you, whew, I just want to remind you of these beautiful things that are inside of each of these episodes because I've even forgotten and I think I've got to go back and really listen to that beautiful meditation that Christy spoke to us at the end of the episode of Becoming Stronger in Our Faith. We then met Dale Kreinkamp, founder of Thriving Through Transitions, and many of you gave me such high, high marks for bringing Dale on and talking about how to become stronger through transition. Boy, women, we know, those of us who have been uh, honored and able to give birth, that transition's the hardest part of the birthing process. It's where you want to quit. It's where you want to scream. And so he helped us understand how to move through those tough transitional periods of life. And boy, I just enjoyed that conversation so much. And then we brought on the astounding Kat Armstrong, who helped us become stronger in the in-between places of life. My conversation with Kat was so riveting. She shared her own story of an in-between place, of when her father tried to commit suicide. And she too made the woman at the well the central figure in her book, And so we we talk a lot about that and how she actually got to sit in that space in Samaria when she visited Israel. It's a powerful conversation. And Dr. Kurt Thompson, wow, no words. That was just, I couldn't even believe that I was able to have a conversation with him on the podcast. He is just my hero on so many levels. He's a interpersonal neurobiologist, a psychiatrist, a spiritual formation (laughs) expert. He's just amazing. The author of Anatomy of the Soul and the Soul of Shame. And he writes, where shame attempts to push us into static inertia, love bids us to move. No hint of shame. No hint of shame is how God wants us to live. So perhaps that might be a reset for you. You may need to hold down the reset button on something that you've been shaming yourself for for years. I did, and I write all about it in my book, and we're going to talk a lot more about it over this season of Reset. We talked to Dr. Chuck DeGroat, oh my gosh, author of Wholeheartedness, Busyness, Exhaustion, and the Divided Self, and boy, oh boy, he asked, have you ever felt pulled in a thousand different directions, and during this pandemic, it couldn't have been more on time? I was introduced again to wholeheartedness in a way that I hadn't been ever. And I really took some time, personal time. That was a reset for me again of looking at where am I living a divided life? Where am I where am, am I divided inside of my soul? Then we brought on the the dynamic Erica Wagenhorn. Oh my gosh, you guys, and she's coming back on for our reset this summer cuz she has a new book coming out. She's the author of three unexplainable Bible studies, and she just rocked my world. (laughs) And Erica brought on and asked us this question, will you get in the wheelbarrow? Mm -hmm. And then I asked her to create a meditation for us, and she did. And so we have that beautiful meditation here in season five as well. Oh my gosh, I got to revisit it so many times. It was so good. And then Dr. Carol McLeod. My goodness. Carol writes, Mother, it is impossible to hear that word without emotion. What do you feel deep down when you read the word mother? Any reason why the word mother carries so much power and creates so much emotion, she asked. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, our mother left us a legacy. 
For some of us, that legacy is unadulterated love. For others, that legacy is devastating heartbreak and loss. And for most of us, the legacy is a mixture of both belonging and pain. And little did I know that during the season, uh, hmm, this beautiful, hard conversation would come up about infertility, which our guests Erica Wiggenhorn and Carol McLeod both had dealt with on a very deep level. And they both, it was right around Mother's Day, and having just lost my mother, and then having uh, the prior Mother's Day before uh, this year, having uh, my daughter-in-law lost and son lost lost their baby. And so it was very emotional. And I just encourage you when you're having a rough time, both of those women speak to hard times, tough times. And yes, it's through the story of infertility, but it's applicable to all. This is fun. I'm kind of enjoying this. I hope you are because it's re-strengthening. I feel like I'm getting stronger just by revisiting each of these beautiful human beings who brought, uh, brought their strength to us so we could borrow their strength and add it to ourselves. Oh, I love that. Caroline Williams brought to us the beautiful understanding about yoga and meditation. She is the founder of the Abbey, an at-home yoga sanctuary of peace, presence, and belonging for all of us, all of us who follow God and who are lovers of Jesus, who are aching to feel whole. And I really loved her conversations and how she helped us understand how we as followers of Jesus can actually practice yoga in a God-centric way. It's worth your listen. Mindful movement and meditation is a huge initiative in my therapeutic work, in my own life, and in my practice. And it's a huge part of helping us come home to our true selves and embody into our God-breathed identity. She gave us a beautiful, I love you meditation at the end of that. So here I'm reminding you to go back and that's at the end and it's at the end of becoming stronger through the practice of yoga. Ooh, and then we brought Miss Margaret Feinberg who just declared to us <laughs> how to become stronger through daily declarations. Her newest book, More Power to You, Declarations to Break Free from Fear and Take Back Your Life. She writes, we are all storytellers and I rehearse the narrative that if I stopped working hard in school, at college, as a writer, then everything would disintegrate, including me. Soon I interpreted every failure and misstep as further proof that I would never be good enough. She says, perhaps you too have sensed the pangs of not being good enough. Today is the day to break free from the unrealistic standards you've been striving to achieve. Declare these words. I am God's beloved child in whom he is well pleased. I am God's beloved child in whom he is well pleased. Okay, you know, we got to take a pause here. Hand over your heart. You're going to be so strong by the end of this beautiful episode. Go ahead. Let's take a deep breath. Feet on the ground. Eyes closed if you're not driving. I am God's beloved child in whom he is well pleased. I am God's beloved child in whom he is well pleased. I am God's beloved child in whom he is well pleased. Meredith McDaniels, licensed professional counselor, beautiful, strong woman brought to us Becoming Stronger in Want and Plenty. She writes, we are born with dreams and some of us have detailed plans about how to make them happen. Yet we all come to a point in life when we realize that we are not in control. I can't thank Meredith enough for coming on and and offering to us her strength in how to be content in want, times of oppression or times of depression, times of difficulty, and how to be strong in times of plenty, which sometimes it's harder to be strong in times of plenty. She led us into a beautiful conversation with Dr. Allison Cook, who talked to us about how to become stronger by setting boundaries specifically and strategically for our souls. 
And she took us to a beautiful place and, and we asked this question, do you control your feelings or do your feelings control you? She taught us about our internal family system that we have, that we're made of parts, we're a composite of many parts, and how to engage in spirit-led self-leadership that will enable us to live a life where we practice emotional regulation and we are in more control. Sorry. And that was our beautiful season five, and it was filled to the full. And so I leave you today hoping that you're filled to the full with a reminder of all of the beautiful souls that have spoken into our lives, all of the beautiful meditations that they have offered for us. And when you are in this season of reset, when you feel maybe a shame wave coming over you, you can go back and visit the beautiful, beautiful episode with Dr. Kurt Thompson, and you can re-listen, and you can fill your soul once again, and you can reset to now living from a place of grace. So Heartlifters, welcome. Welcome to season six, a season, a summer of reset, where we're going to put our hand down on that reset button and hold it for nine weeks, give or take an hour or two, And we're going to reset our operating system, our heart, our mind, our soul, and our body. Turn it off for a little while just to reset it so that we can turn it back on so that it's in better working condition. Are you in? I sure hope so. Until next time. Thanks for listening today. It was great having you here. For even more great content and resources, please join the Stronger Every Day online community at JanelleRairdon.com. Always remember, you, my friend, have value, worth, and dignity. <laughs>